<clears throat> Not yet. Okay. Well, uh, yes, but I edited it out. Okay, I need to scrub the tub before I put the baby in there. Ah, okay. Okay. Okay, I scrolled after I cleaned him. Okay. Hey, you go over there. Dog's gonna be mad. Uh huh. <clears throat> okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Minute. Okay. Yeah, you're going in. Okay. I'll try to finish in like half hour. <clears throat> okay, here we go. I hope so. Hello, everyone. This is the lecture for section 3.2, trigonometric integrals. So these next two sections are going to require a lot of knowledge from your pre-calc. It's gonna test you really hard on your pre-calc stuff, okay? Um, so if you haven't done so yet, uh, go look for those pre-calc notes. Uh, in particular, go look for those uh, trigonometric identities, okay? Uh, I uh, well, the college itself has sort of like a little trig trifold, if you guys know what I'm talking about, um, that has all the useful trigonometric identities uh, from pre-calc. I'm going to go ahead and put that in our notes so that you can print out yourself uh, and just have it next to you, okay? It's going to be, uh, like I said, it's going to test you a lot. It's going to test you like crazy, okay? So what we're going to do in section 3.2 is deal with trigonometric integrals, just integrals that have trig stuff in them. Just trig, just trig, okay? Um, in particular, we're gonna do uh, sine and cosine um, integrals, and then we're gonna move on to tangent and secant uh, functions at the very end, okay? Uh, so the first thing I want you guys to do is right off the bat, I'm gonna have you guys do some um, some uh, uh, u substitution. So these are run of the mill, basic u substitution uh, integrals. Um, you're supposed to just make u equal to something, right? And then use your trig uh, your trig integrals uh, from there to just simplify, just like we did in chapter four. That's it. I mean, so, sorry, chapter one, chapter one. Okay. So now, after you get through those, okay, that's just to warm up on what's about to come. Okay. Uh, like I said, this is going to stress your pre-calc knowledge, okay? The trig identities, okay? And I provide a pretty, pretty good, like, big, huge summary about what's going to happen in this section in particular, okay? And that summary is this right here, okay? 
uh, what we're going to do here, right, is in order to take trigonometric integrals, right, we're going to make use of all of our trigonometric identities. And the key here is this in particular. This, like specifically, specifically, it's this right here. We're going to reduce the powers of the integrand, okay? And in particular, we're going to reduce them so that we can get an integral or an expression that is much more manageable with the calculus that we know. Okay, now you should go uh, see if you can find your notes from pre-calc, right? Uh, and have the notes sort of like next to you somehow, right? Or at least recall them, have them at the ready somewhere. But if you don't, that's all right. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys some trigonometric identities. I think that's a little too thick. Let me go here uh, and that's where it's supposed to be, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, there's some common trigonometric identities that I want you guys to look at. It's these right here and some useful trig integrals. Okay, these are from way, way, way back from Calc 1 when you first started studying stuff. Okay. All right, so the first thing I want everyone to do, okay, and I'm going to make you guys do this uh, so you guys can see how simple it is, right? Uh, the very first, well, the very second quest, uh, quick check here, right, has you guys taking integrals of sine squared and cosine squared. And the way that we're going to do this is we are just going to use the substitution. Flat out use the substitution, okay, and then use your integral rules uh, to split it up into something a little bit more manageable. Okay, that is it. That is it. Okay. Okay. Afterwards, I know these are quick quick checks here, right? Uh, I want you to try this quick check out, right? This also still requires you substitution, right? Uh, they should be simple. You should be in this one. For this one, you should be uh, sine of x, right? And then here, uh, you should be uh, cosine of x, right? And they simplify down just like they did in chapter one, OK? So now. Uh, the reason why I'm making you guys do quick checks before we get into any sort of problem solving uh, for this section is because we are going to use all of those. Uh, each one of those quick checks that came before, they have sort of techniques, right, that we're going to be using repeatedly, right, when we get down to actually doing sines and cosines of higher powers. Okay. So if you notice the, the quick check that's uh, on the screen right now, right? Uh, it's a simple use substitution, right? The idea behind this section is uh, we're going to have integrals that have higher powers of cosine and sine all together at once, okay? And in order to uh, solve those, right, we're going to be using our trig identities, right, uh, and our use substitution, our knowledge of use substitution to solve the much more complicated ones. OK. OK, so I have a problem solving strategy that's here. OK, <clears throat> um, the problem solving uh, strategy that's here uh, is in the book. OK, and you can go ahead and go off of this. Um, it does summarize pretty well, sort of like the strategy that you're, you're supposed to use for every case. OK, um, but uh, I think it's sort of very long winded. Uh, the uh, the summary that makes more sense for me, right, is the thing that's in the salmon, the thing that's in the pink that's uh, uh, above on the first page. All we're going to do, all this section is, is uh, reducing down the powers of sine and cosine, whichever one we want, right, uh, reducing down the sine. Uh, and cosine powers using our trig identities and then using u substitution, right, to solve the more complex ones. Okay. So uh, there are, let me go through the problem solving strategy that's here. So the first one, right, is if k is odd, right, uh, sine k, you break, you, you basically separate one away. Okay. And then use our identities. Okay. Ah, I forgot. Uh, Cosine j sine k. So the j is uh, is referring to the power of the cosine. The k is referring to the power of the sine. OK. 
Okay. If J is odd, we rewrite this way and we use identity. Okay. If both J and K are odd, either one of these scenarios can be used, right? And if J and K are even, right, then we use our half angle formula that's right here. Okay. Like I said, you can remember these conditions and each one of these has a condition and you can sort of uh, use them however you see fit once you take a look at the powers of sine and cosine, okay? But the idea behind all of these, right, is to use your trig and use your U substitution to reduce the powers of sine and cosine into something more manageable, okay? So what do I mean by that? Uh, let me go ahead and do this first example here. <clears throat> okay, let's say I wanted to solve sine fifth x dx. Okay, let's say I wanted to solve this thing right here. The way that we're going to do it, like I said, uh, so in this case, sine is odd. There is no uh, cosine here. So we're going to be using the odd rule if you want to follow along with the uh, problem solving strategies from above, right? Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and sort of explain it the way I like to. I'm just trying to reduce the power of the fifth somehow, right? And try to use my trig identities to make this a little bit more simpler, OK? So the first thing I'm going to do, OK, is uh, that's a bit too thick. There we go. Let me go back a little bit. There we go. Integral. Uh, my sine to the fifth, I can rewrite as sine fourth x times sine of x. I'm separating one away. That's it. OK? Now, my sine fourth of x, right, is sine squared of x quantity squared times sine of x dx. So all I did, right, is I reduced this down to squared, which is squared, and then times. So there's still sine 5x here, right? OK? Here's what I mean by using your trig integral or trig identities, right? Sine squared, right, using our trig identity is 1 minus cosine squared of x. And that's squared times sine of x dx. I haven't done anything special yet, right? I haven't taken the integral yet. Equal to the integral. Now I'm going to distribute this portion out right here in particular. The 1 minus cosine x quantity squared. I'm going to distribute that out. And when I do, I'm going to get this. 1. Uh, minus 2 cosine squared x plus cosine fourth x times sine of x dx. So all I did was expand out, all I did was expand out this blue portion, right? Hopefully you guys see that, okay? Now I can go ahead and separate some stuff away. So I get to multiply each one of these by my sine x that's out front. OK, so it's going to be integral sine of x dx minus 2 integral cosine squared of x times sine of x dx plus the integral of cosine to the fourth x times sine of x dx. OK, now notice what happened, right? Each one of these integrals separately are much more manageable. Specifically, all of the integrals that are here, uh, actually, let me step back here. This one is a standard integral. The integral of sine is negative cosine, OK? This one requires u substitution, which can easily be done. And then this one also requires u substitution, which can easily be done, OK? So notice what I did. It just simplified uh, 
And all I did was use my trig identities to simplify my, my sign to the fifth X, right? That's it. That's all that happened. Okay, so if you solve this out, right, you should get negative cosine x plus 2 cosine cubed x over 3 minus cosine 5x over 5 plus c. And we're done. This is our final. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Uh, cosine to the third x times sine to the sixth x dx. So cosine is odd. Sine is even. If you want to use that, um, if you want to use that method, right? Um, but like I said, the easiest way, at least I think so, to look at it is use all your trig integrals. Right. Use all your trig identities from pre-calc to try to reduce the powers as much as possible and make it into a much more manageable integral. OK, one that hopefully uh, you can use a uh, substitution. OK, so for this one. OK, like I said, if you're following along, cosine to the third X, that's odd. Right. So we're going to need that one. Okay, the idea here is exactly the same as up here. So I'm going to grab the cosine squared x times cosine of x times sine 6x dx. Okay, I just grabbed the cosine to the third and separated it into a square and a single term under multiplication, right? Cosine squared, that is. 1 minus sine squared of x times cosine of x whoa, times sine 6 x dx, right? OK, now I'm going to rearrange some stuff and uh, multiply some stuff through. So there's a sine x out here. There's sine 6x right here, and then 1 minus sine squared here. And I'm going to grab the cosine and just sort of stick it in the back. So I'm going to have this now, right? Integral. I'm going to multiply these two for sure. I'm going to multiply the sine 6x and 1 minus sine squared x. And I'm just going to grab the cosine, throw it back here, just like I said, OK? So I'm going to get left with this sine 6x minus sine 8x times cosine x dx. Notice I did nothing special here other than multiply stuff through after I use some trig identities, right? OK. Equal. Now I'm going to go ahead and separate this uh, into two separate integrals, right? with the cosine of x dx at the very end of each one. So integral sine, let me write that a little better, sine uh, 6x times cosine of x dx minus integral sine 8x times cosine of x dx, OK? Now, notice what we just did, right? The original integral, this one, we could not do using any method, right? But we used our trig identities, right? And that is equivalent to these two integrals right here. And both of these integrals, in order to solve them, is just a good old regular u substitution. For both of them, right? If you take a look, both of them, you let u equal sine of x. OK, so if you do this right, you should get sine seventh x over 7 minus sine 9 of x over 9 plus c. And we are done. That is our final. OK. Simple enough, right? 
Okay, let's move on to the very last one. This one's gonna be a long one, okay? And this one's gonna have us uh, using a bunch of stuff. It, it's gonna have a lot of stuff for us to keep a track of, okay? So just keep in mind of that, right? I'm gonna try to separate everything as best as possible. You should too when you're doing this integral yourself, okay? So cosine to the fourth of x, right? So in this case, cosine, the power on it is even, right? So if you're following with the problem solving strategy, you're gonna need to use the even one, okay? So in this one, like I said, use trig identities to reduce the power of the cosine. We need to reduce the power of that four, right? So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So if you guys remember, right, integral, cosine to the fourth of x is also cosine squared x squared dx. No mystery there. Okay. Equal. Now, cosine squared of x, that had a nice half angle formula, right? This becomes now integral of 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2 squared dx. OK? <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, if I distribute the fourth uh, to the, the square to the top and the bottom, right, I'm going to have this now, 1 over 4 integral, uh, 1 plus cosine 2x, cosine of 2x squared. And if I expand this now, right, 1 fourth integral, I'm going to expand this thing in here, uh, it's going to be 1 plus 2 cosine of 2x, okay, plus cosine squared of 2x dx. And I'm almost there. So this is going to now all be equal to, right, 1 fourth, I'm going to put big brackets here, integral of 1 dx plus 2 times the integral of cosine of 2x. Let me practice what I preach, dx plus integral cosine squared 2x dx. OK, so hopefully nobody's fallen off the train yet. So notice that all I did was I grabbed this integral, right? And I distributed it over all three of my terms inside. OK, so there's nothing wrong with me doing that, right? So now, so long as we can find all of these integrals, we're golden, right? This one is simple. OK, that one should just be x. So the two more difficult ones is this one, right, and this one. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to separate them out so that everybody can see what's going on. So the first one I'm going to do is just the integral of cosine of 2x dx, right? So then for this one, hopefully you guys see this already. So this is a good old u substitution. So u is 2x du is 2 dx, right? So then uh, du over 2 is dx. So it's going to be the integral of cosine of u times du over 2. And if you do all this appropriately, you should get sine of 2x over 2. OK, so we have one solution. Our blue is that. OK, now comes the next one. We need to do the integral of cosine squared of 2x dx. OK, and this one, if you remember from the quick check that happened maybe a page ago, right? We can use our half angle formula for this one. So it's going to be the integral right, of 1 plus uh, cosine of 4x 
over 2 dx. OK. Uh, 1 half pops out, right? It's going to be times the integral of 1 plus cosine of 4x dx. And if you do this right, <clears throat> the integral here is going to be 1 half x plus sine of 4x over 4. That is our pink one. So all that's left for us to do now is just combine all of these together, right? So this is going to be equal to 1 fourth. We know what the integral of 1 dx is, right? That was x plus 2 times the integral of cosine of 2x dx. We solved that already. That's going to be sine of 2x over 2. We'll clean it up in a little bit. Plus the integral of the pink one we just figured out, 1 half x plus sine of 4x over 4, OK? Keep a track of your parentheses. Keep a track of your operations. Make sure you're not uh, combining stuff you're not supposed to. Now I'm going to clean this up a little bit, OK? So the two on the bottom and the two here, they cancel, right? And then I can distribute my half into both of these. So I get left with 1 fourth x plus sine of, let me write it correctly, sine of 2x plus 1 half x plus sine of 4x over 8 in this case, right? And if you simplify this out enough, 3 over 8 x plus sine of 2x over 4 plus sine of 4x over 32 plus c. And we are done. So notice how we did all of these integrals, right? They, the big crux of the problem, right, is using the trig identities to simplify as much as possible, right? Without it, we can't do these, OK? <clears throat> so now that we have these sort of done, right, I want everybody to practice on a couple of them. I know this section's got a lot of quick checks in it, OK? So uh, take your time with them, OK? Make sure you sort of understand all the steps, OK? So now moving on, now that we did sine and cosine, we're going to do secant and tangent uh, uh, for this sec uh, secondary part, right? Um, they work out just the same. We are going to be using uh, the simpler identities, right? Uh, the simpler integrals, sorry, the simpler integrals to solve out some of the, uh, the more complicated secant and tangent ones. And we're going to be using this one a whole bunch. OK, so again, there is a problem solving strategy. It is in the book if you want to take a look at it. Here it is summarized, right? Uh, but sort of in total, right, uh, we are going to be leveraging both the trigonometric identities and u substitution, right, to reduce the higher power. It's still the same goal. We're trying to reduce the powers of tangent and secant. That's all we're trying to do here, OK? So let me move on to the first example. OK. There we go. All right. So for this one, like I said, we want to reduce the power of tangent somehow and then start using our identities to reduce this somehow so we can get nice manage manageable integrals at the end. Right. OK. So. Integral tangent to the fourth is also a tangent squared x times tangent squared x dx. So all I did was separate into instead of having to the fourth, squared and squared. Okay. Integral. 
I'm going to grab one of them. And I'm actually going to use my trigonometric identity. Uh, tangent squared is secant squared of x minus 1, OK, times dx. OK, so now I'm going to go ahead and grab my tangent squared and distribute it into both of these. And I have this now, integral tangent squared x secant squared x. Let me write the squares right. Uh, minus the integral tangent squared x dx. OK, so I grabbed one integral to the fourth, right? And then I reduced it into two separate integrals, both with a smaller power, right? Which is good, right? So now we get to handle how to do both of these separately. Got it? OK, so let's go ahead and do the first one, integral of tangent squared x secant squared x dx. So let's go ahead and handle that first one first, right? So if you notice, this one's going to be a good old u substitution. If you let u equal tangent of x, right, then you should notice that du is secant squared x dx. OK, so that's an easy handling, right? So then. If you do this integral properly, you should get tangent cubed x over 3. OK, run it through if you need to. OK, so we have an answer for the blue one. Let's move on to the pink one. OK, integral of just tangent square root of x dx, right? So it turns out this one we just need to do the um, uh, the the uh, uh, trig identity for it. It's going to be also equal to secant squared x minus one dx equal to the integral of secant squared x minus the integral of one dx. So now notice this: the integral of secant squared that's just tangent. So if you guys remember your derivatives, right? The derivative of tangent is secant squared. So the backwards should be true, right? And then minus 1 dx, the integral of 1 dx, that's x, so minus x. We have our pink one. Now all we got to do is just slap them all together. Uh, <clears throat> this one. Let me move it down a little bit so I can have a lot of room. There we go. Tangent cubed x over 3, right, minus tangent x minus x plus c. And if I want to clean it up a little more, there's not very much left cubed, cubed, cubed. Not very much left to clean up, really. Minus tangent x plus x plus c. And we are done. So notice the trick, right? The crux of all of it happened right here, where I was using my trig identity sort of freely to uh, reduce the powers, right? OK. Let's move on to the next one. This one's going to be a little difficult, but the, the strategy is still the same. We want to uh, grab uh, the powers and start reducing them somehow, right? So let's move on to this next integral, OK? So in this one, OK, uh, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to grab this secant squared, OK? Or sorry, this tangent squared 2x. And I'm going to uh, use my trig identity on that one. So it's going to be the integral of secant cubed 2x 
tangent squared of 2x is going to be secant squared 2x minus 1 dx. And now I'm going to go ahead and distribute the secant cubed into both of these. So I'm going to have this now. <coughs> the integral secant to the fifth of 2x uh, dx. Let me not forget the dx minus the integral of secant to the third x dx, uh, 2x dx. So sometimes, sometimes, right, uh, as much as you can reduce it, right, uh, it's still going to be insanely difficult, insanely long and tedious in order to solve this out. OK, and this is one of them. And this is why I wanted to run through this one really quick. Um, the This one just 10, this this one is just nasty. This one is just going to be absolutely wretched. So let me show you why. I'm going to go ahead and color code the two integrals that we need to solve, right? OK, so let's go ahead and handle that first one. It's going to be the integral of secant to the fifth of 2x dx, right? Unfortunately, the only, only way for us to do this integral is doing it by parts. So this means that we have to do a u, right? So our u here, unfortunately, is going to be the secant to the fifth of 2x. Oops, not the dx, right? Which means our du is going to be, uh, follow along with me now, right? Five secant to the fourth of two x times the in uh, the derivative of secant two x, which is secant two x times tangent of two x times the integral of two x, which is two because we're doing chain rule, right? And this is going to be. Uh, times 2 uh, dx. OK, notice how nasty it just got, right? OK, uh, since u is that, right, my dv has to be dx. So it means my v is just x. So that's simple enough, right? But now, uh, let's go ahead and do this integral, right? It's going to be uv. So uh, x secant to the fifth of x minus the integral of v times du. Uh, x times 10, uh, not sine, sorry, secant to the fourth of 2x times secant of 2x times tangent of 2x dx. Unfortunately, this is going to require another integration by parts in order to do that tail end. OK? It's not pretty. It's not pretty at all. OK? So now let's go ahead and handle the second one. It's going to be the same thing, right? Integral of secant cubed 2x dx. So u is secant cubed 2x. du is going to be 5. Whoops, not 5. 3. 3. 3. Secant squared 2x times the derivative of secant of 2x, right? So it's going to be secant. 2x times tangent of 2x times the derivative of 2x, which is 2 dx. OK, uh, that means dv is dx. v is going to be x. So all of this, if we do integration by parts, right, is going to be x times, so it's going to be u, v. So x times secant cubed x minus the integral of v x times du times 6 secant squared uh, 2x. 
and I forgot something here. Look at me go. That's going to be supposed to be 2x minus. It's real easy to forget those things. 2x minus uh, secant squared 2x times secant of 2x times tangent of 2x dx. So the solution for my blue one is this one. And the solution for my pink one would be this one, both of which are going to require yet another u substitution. Sorry, not u sub, uh, integration by parts. Integration by parts. Integration by parts. So I'm just going to go ahead. These are just nasty. So I'm just going to put dot, 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 right? These just continually get nastier and nastier. Nastier. If you actually find the solutions to these, these are super, 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 super long. Okay. Really, really, really long. Okay. But now I want you guys to take a look at the bottom one, the very last example that we have. Right. Notice that just the tangent is one power greater. That's it. That is it. Okay. So let's go ahead and figure out how to do this one. Okay, this one's actually going to require the same strategy that we've been using in the past. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Okay, I'm going to grab one of my secant and one of my tangents and separate those two away. Okay, so this is going to be now the integral secant cubed 2x, whoops, it's not cubed, it's squared 2x times tangent squared 2x times secant of 2x times tangent of 2x dx. <clears throat> okay. So all I did was I grabbed a secant and a tangent from each one of these and separated them away. And that is it. That's all I did. Nothing special. So now what I'm going to do, tangent squared. I'm going to use an identity on that one. So it's going to be integral of secant squared 2x. Tangent is secant squared of 2x minus 1 times secant of 2x times tangent of 2x dx. All I did was a trig integral or a trig identity, right? All right. So now. <laughs> I'm going to multiply these two, this into here, right? Let, let me let me do that first. So I don't. Sometimes I get ahead of myself and I do one too many steps, and it's not best for you guys. So then here I'm going to have this now, right? Secant to the fourth two x, right? Minus secant squared two x times secant of 2x times tangent 2x dx. OK, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and basically separate, multiply them into there. Uh, and I'm going to get two integrals out. So let me write out the two integrals, OK, equal to the integral secant to the fourth 2x times secant of 2x times tangent of 2x minus the integral of secant squared 2x times secant of 2x times tangent 2x, right? And both of these are dx. I forgot the dx is dx minus minus dx. Okay, so notice what we did. The original was this, and we it sort of looked like we went backwards, right? Not entirely, because you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. And we got these two integrals. So long as we are able to solve these two integrals, we have our solution, right? So that's exactly what I want to do. Uh, this blue one, going to be the first one, right? And then this pink one is going to be the second one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to write it out over here, the integral 
right? Uh, sorry, uh, secant, the derivative of secant of x, right? If I want to take the derivative of it, that is equal to secant of x times tangent of x. Okay, and this is what we're going to need now. Okay, so notice that everything in here, right? All of these things that are in here are powers of secant and the derivative of secant is in both. So this one, both of these actually are going to be nice u substitutions. So u is going to be secant of 2x. du is going to be, um, let me write it in the middle for both of these, right? Uh, u is secant of 2x. du is going to be secant 2x times tangent of 2x times 2 times dx. So then that means I'm going to go ahead and rearrange some stuff here. I'm just going to do dx on the end. And I'm going to do du over 2. OK. Let me move this down a little bit. There we go. Equal to. What we have here now is this. I'm going to have a 1 over 2 integral u to the fourth, right, du, minus a 1 half integral u squared du, du, u, 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 u. There we go. The blue one is this piece right here, and the pink one is this piece right here, right? And if you integrate these all right, you should get one half, both of them had a half in it, right? Of secant to the fifth of 2x all over 5 minus secant to the third of uh, 2x over 3 plus c. And we are done. OK, so like I said, I want everybody to notice what was happening the whole entire time. We were using uh, trig identities, right, and u substitution, uh, whatever we could, right, to sort of break down a really nasty integral into multiple smaller integrals that are much more manageable either by u substitution or just by basic integral properties themselves, right? OK, so uh, that is the last Example, what comes up next, I want you guys to practice on some of these, okay? Some of these might be nasty, okay? So just keep in mind of that. Um, try your best, okay? Uh, if you get stuck on them, you know where to find me, okay? And I believe after this, it is lecture question. So um, go ahead and get these done. I am now going to throw in some nastier concepts. So if you take a look at number two right there at the bottom, I'm making you find a volume, right? of a shape now that has a trig, a, a, a trig functions in them, OK? Before, we weren't able to do these, right? Now we are, OK? So uh, go ahead, try these out. Uh, if there's any problems, any problems at all, uh, drop me a line. Come find me in the math lab uh, or during my office hours, OK? Uh, besides that, I think I am done here. Happy studying.